What's up, Soul Tribe? It's your girl, Dominique, with Empathic Guidance, and I'm back with another video for you guys today. So, yesterday, I got an inbox um, from somebody that I've been knowing for at least, like, 10 to 12 years, for sure. Um, I've been pretty close to her virtually, I guess. I have a lot of friends that I've been knowing for, like, 10 years, and we never met in person. Like, we just been internet friends. So, this is one of them. I've been knowing her since maybe, like... Honestly, it wasn't even 12 years. It probably been since like 2009, 2010. So yeah, about good eight, nine years or whatever. But um, yeah, she got in my, she hopped in my inbox yesterday and she basically asked, um, what is it like to go through a spiritual awakening? So um, I just jotted down a few things. So if you guys see me looking down, then it's only because i um, I'm trying to keep it on track because if y'all notice about me, like I can like veer off of the subject and then it'd be kind of hard for me to come back and remember what I had to say. So I just kind of did <sighs> jotted down a few notes just so I can stay on track if you guys don't mind. So I'm going to be looking down a little bit. So um, basically, I feel like everybody's experience may possibly be different. I'm pretty sure like not every single person like went through the exact same thing, you know, uh, as far as their awakening. And I think it should be known also that, you know, I've been on this journey, I want to say since about last December, um, you know, but it's like stages for sure. And to become fully awakened, it definitely take, it takes a while. Um, I'm probably like on stage three of this journey, which is like, I don't know, still just trying to find my purpose in the world, to be honest with you. So, uh, I want to say, I don't know exactly how everybody else enters, but, um, I posted on Facebook, like maybe a month ago or may, like in December that, um, something very traumatic happened like in my like my everyday life was kind of shifted because you know um something traumatic really traumatic happened in my relationship um I don't want to get into too much detail because then that means I'm gonna have to put people on blast and you know that can get pretty ugly so I'm just gonna leave it at that that something really traumatic happened in my relationship and so it kind of changed the dynamic, the way that I seen things and the direction that I see seen things going in. And um, it was a very abrupt change, like, you know, going from feeling like everything is A-OK -okay to like, damn, you know what, this might not work out. Um, without even, without no in-between was like extremely difficult. It's like literally like jumping out of a bowl of ice water into a fucking pit of fire. It's like the extremes from one thing to the next. So, um, I went through something called the dark night of the soul. And really that's, uh, I guess basically like spiritual depression or something. I think that's what they consider like depression, like the, the beginning stages of your awakening or whatever. And, um, really the reason why I guess they call it the dark night of the soul is because, you it's something that you have to kind of face alone like you have to go through introspection look at yourself become aware of any negative patterns that may be sabotaging your own life which i named that in many videos before this one but um you just go through a depressing state like you go through a seriously depressing state where you're like questioning your purpose in life questioning why you even here you know questioning why so much perpetual negativity is just happening in your life and like you you're going through the phase of like trying to gain resolution to all your issues and you don't include anybody and I really resonate with that because I was like seriously depressed and I was in a house full of people, my kids, my mate, and and nobody else around me knew that I was going through this depression because I was seriously putting on a mask, waiting until everybody was walking out the door to go to school and work and just breaking down every single day, sleeping until it was time for me to go to work. And I worked evenings. Then I was going to work late every day because I couldn't even pull myself out the bed. So, yeah, that was like the first stage that um, 
it was like the deepest, darkest <laughs> experience I ever had. Like I've been sad over like bad situations happening in my life before, but I don't think I've ever been sad to this extent. Like it was intense. So, um, pretty much solitude was what I put next, but you know, basically when you're going through the dark night of the soul, that's kind of incorporated in because you don't want to be around nobody. You don't answer your phone, not even for people that you normally talk to every day. You just want to be alone. You just want to, you know, just think, concentrate on like, what is it? Like, how can I change my life to make certain things stop happening? Or what am I doing to contribute negativity to the situation? So, um... That's the second thing that I kind of witnessed is that I got into this state where I went from being like a super popular person, like wanting to be around. Well, it's not necessarily that I want to be around people all the time, but I was super popular as far as like having a lot of different friends and stuff like that. So I was never bored. I was never at home. You know, I literally was, I literally always had people, always gone, had people to hang out with because um, you know, people just always wanted to hang out. So it was like, you know, and me being like a people person, I never turned people down. So it was like, I was like never home because people always wanted to do something. And when one friend didn't and another friend did, and that's exactly, you know, how I was, which, you know, probably caused some issues in my life too, because you can go and be with your friends. You can be by yourself. But when you have a relationship, you know, that should be the brunt of your focus, you know, outside of like life changes, career, whatever the case. But, you know, outside of that, your friends shouldn't be getting more attention than your actual partner, you know. So um, another thing I started noticing and it's still very heavily happening in my life still to this day is the signs and synchronicities. Like, it's something, some whatever message that's trying to be delivered from the universe to me through numbers is, like, every single day. And, you know, I document it just because I want to see, like, how much I see synchronicities a day or I see master numbers all day, every day from 10, 10 a.m. all the way until whatever time I stay up. Because, of course, from that point, it's, it's nothing but synchronicities. I mean, except for 6 o'clock, of course, or 7 o'clock, or 8 o'clock, or 9 o'clock. But, you know, from 10, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then it'll start back again at 10 o'clock at night. 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. However late I stay up, you know. So, pretty much... Pretty much that's something that I started to real see like, wow, why am I seeing 11, 11 so much? And again, anybody that's following me or friends with me on Facebook, I post it every single time I catch it because it's like, it's not like I'm like waiting for the time. Like, oh my God, it's about to turn. No, it's like my eyes automatically gravitate towards any clock when it's, when master numbers are on the clock and, um, it's not even just that, like the the clock could could have like reset and been like blinking and it won't even be nowhere near 11, 11. And I'll just like walk past one of my kids rooms and they'll like, they'll be like so tired in the morning that they'll just like un unplug their alarm clock and plug it back up. And the clock would just be blinking 11, 11. I'm like the hell. So yeah, I mean, it's like, it's meanings to all the different numbers or whatever. And most, you know, all of them are positive because they say it's message from our angels, ancestors, or, you know, um, you know, just like it's it's master numbers. Like it's supposed to. It's it, each number has a positive message to it. So let's just put it like that. And I'm still to this day um, seeing that. Some people say that that's decoding the matrix. Now I don't exactly know what that means, but um, again, it makes sense because the more awakened I become, the more around the clock it becomes. Because at first it was just eleven eleven, and now it's literally every single hour that has a number that can be perpetuated okay so that's what i've been experiencing as well and that hasn't stopped that's still going on um another thing that i experienced that i wasn't experiencing before i started going through a spiritual awakening was sleep paralysis 
<sighs> now, anybody knows sleep paralysis can be pretty scary, but for some odd reason, I feel extremely protected because I can like when I'm sleeping or, and, and when I'm sleeping, it's not like a deep state of sleep. It's like that type of sleep where it's like, you just fell asleep. So you're like in between consciousness, like you're like half in, half out, but I've never seen an actual entity. Like anytime I actually had sleep paralysis, it would be a time where either I was laying on my side and whatever was approaching me was approaching me from the back. You know, and I would think that like it was my boyfriend that had come home early because I work nights, he work days. And I would have my back turned to his side of the bed and like be facing the outside of the bed and or the other way around. And then I'll feel something like I'll hear something trudging up the steps and walk up behind me and like lean over me. But I'll be so paralyzed that like I'll try to turn around and look and I'll be stuck. And then I'll be like, oh, shit, this is sleep paralysis. Like, the minute that you feel awake but you can't move, you're experiencing sleep paralysis. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you feeling or seeing things in incorporation to that. So, um, yeah, I was, like, laying. I was facing, sleeping, facing his side of the bed. So, the edge of the bed was behind me. And I felt something like walk right up to the bed, lean up against the bed. And like what it felt like was like my boyfriend came home early and he just walked up to my side of the bed and he was like leaning from behind me to like give me a kiss on the cheek or something. Which don't make sense because you literally could just get in on your side of the bed, right? And whatever it was that came from behind me could have done that too, but it didn't. And... um that's what I mean by I feel like I'm protected from actually seeing things, but I can definitely feel the weight and the heat and like the presence, the presence. Like you can tell, you can feel when something is behind you. You can feel when something like come and like put their arm up against your arm or something like that. So that's what I mean by I could feel the presence. Like you, like you would swear up and down that you were just about to turn around like, babe, and like nothing there, you know? And I don't know how other people like break their sleep paralysis, but since you can't speak or move while you're in sleep paralysis, I would just think really hard in my head in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And then the sleep paralysis would break and I would turn around and there will be no sign of nothing there. So, I mean, it's a very scary experience. Like it will have you kind of like, oh my God, what was that? And uh, one other time it did happen, um... I think it happened three times altogether. The first time it happened, I think I woke up in the middle of the night, probably went downstairs to get some water pee, came back upstairs, got in the bed, and I feel like I was kind of cold. My boyfriend has back turned to me. It was like freezing cold. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to put my head under the cover. I never do that. I never put my head under the cover when I'm asleep. And I'm like, you know, I, I just call myself trying to like circulate some heat, you know what I'm saying? Thinking, okay, I'm going to be breathing under the cover. So eventually it's going to get warm. And so I don't even think I was under like a comforter and a sheet, but I was under a sheet. And um, I put it over my face and I don't like doing that because it made me feel like I can't breathe. But for some odd reason, I did it that day. And I woke up or I felt like I was still woke. And something was like literally nose to nose with me. Like it wasn't nothing but the sheet in between us. And I could feel it breathing. I could hear it. And I like my eyes was open, but I didn't, I was paralyzed. Like I couldn't like rip the sheet off my face because I'm like looking out the corner of my eye and I see babe laying there like, just was back turning me. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what is on the other side of this sheet. But again, somehow every time I experience sleep paralysis, I'm protected enough to not see whatever entity is there in the room with me. Another thing that I witnessed uh, was my senses. Like um, I became clear audience. Like I could just hear things like very easily. Like before I feel like I had like I'll I don't want to say I was hard of hearing, but you know, you know how people like work in loud warehouses and stuff like that. And that's what I've done all my life. It's like work in loud places where you almost have to wear like earplugs to protect your hearing. And so <clears throat> 
So I want to say I had the worst, but I ain't had the best hearing either. And then it got to a point where I can hear something very small from far away. And I'm just like, that's weird as hell. Like, that was so quiet, but I heard it from, you know, upstairs or something like that. And um, another thing that I would notice is like shadows. Like I've never ever seen like a straight up full on entity. And I'm kind of thankful because I probably would be freaked out. But I could be in the kitchen like cleaning up. Everybody tucked away in their bedrooms and stuff for the night. And I'll just kind of see something like walk by. But like out of my peripheral. And I'll be like, babe. And it won't be nobody down there. And it'll scare the hell out of me. Now that's happened a few times. And then another thing that I experienced is like physically feeling sound like um, and another friend told me this, too. So I was like, wow, I was like blown away when she told me like, yeah, I can feel the vibration of like sound like a car drove by outside. I felt the vibration like in my body. <clears throat> but yeah, um, I definitely can like feel the vibration of music, like physically feel it. And um, that's kind of weird. I didn't experience that before or not necessarily weird, but it's it's a difference that I've seen in, you know, a quality of non-awaken or non-consciousness versus consciousness, I guess you can say. Another thing is that I noticed like certain habits just started to fall away. Like I didn't make a, a like a conscious decision to stop certain things, like certain stuff just stopped in my life, like. TV. I haven't watched TV since August. And it's not like I woke up one day like, you know what, I'm not watching TV no more because it's like nothing but junk on here. And you know, I'm way too empathic. I can't watch nothing without crying. I can't watch nothing without picking up other people's emotions. I'm tired. I don't want to watch it anymore. But I think, you know, subconsciously, that's probably why it happened because I, I did used to get like Ex like experience extreme like mood swings as far as like being extra sad like I don't know um one thing that I do know notice about being empathic is like when a whole world is experiencing sadness like when Aretha Franklin passed away like I feel like I could feel the sadness of the world on my shoulders to be honest with you like I'll be just up crying like that was my mama or something or whatever so you know when it's like ugh, people that i don't know like the whole like the a mass a mass amount of the world is like going through grief then i can really feel it like heavily 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 i can really feel it with my partner going through stuff too of course because we exchange energies but um yeah so i just stopped watching tv um, I went like four months without eating meat and I started working at a restaurant in like October and I slipped up for them two months, but like, I'm angry about it now. I wish I never did that. And now I'm back on my vegetarian diet or I've been fasting for the past two days. So if I sound a little lackluster, that's why, because even though, um, you know, like I said, you don't tell yourself nothing. Like it just seemed like your body tell you like, you know, we're not going to eat today. We're fasting just drink water you know what i'm saying and so monday and to monday and today um i've been fasting just on a water fast alone so you know if i sound a little sluggish then that may be why and probably by tomorrow i'll be a little bit more used to it or i probably could drink some more water now i guess <sighs> but yeah i do feel a little bit tired but it's okay because again spiritually it's like an intuitive nudge like you need to detox or something like something in my body is telling me you don't need food right now you need to detox you know so that's what i'm doing not because i planned it like you know what start monday i'm just gonna go on a seven day water fast it, it just kind of happened like you know i didn't eat yesterday and then i recognized today either like i'm like man my body wouldn't even take coffee this morning like i took a couple sips and that was just it so um i'm trying to think of what else the tv cutting off meat it's like a lot of people you won't be able to relate to anymore so you pretty much gonna just wipe your slate clean as far as friends and people that you normally used to be able to associate with you're not gonna be able to relate to them anymore and i shared a video like that because it was a young lady with like really naturally curly hair and um she said that she was experiencing clairvoyance by the age of 20 and that she couldn't relate to anything like the people that she used to be around or um 
you know, the things that she used to do, she couldn't relate to it anymore. And I feel the same way. Like, I, like I said, I used to be so popular. I had so many friends and they, and I just stayed in rotation with them friends. Like, you know, I had something to do every day, somebody to talk to every day. And I looked up like, wow, I literally don't have any friends anymore. And they kind of just fell away because I couldn't relate to them anymore. So I, did, I stopped fighting for the friendship. I stopped doing the same things that I was doing. I probably stopped answering their phone calls. And again, it wasn't planned. It was just maybe my spirit rejecting them because... The people that I basically consider friends wasn't the healthiest people to have in my life, to be honest with you. So, um, yeah, I put the desire to eat more healthy, which is the same thing as, you know, out of nowhere in, in May, I just woke up like I'm not eating any meat anymore. You know, and basically people was thinking that I, you know, just because, just because I'm overweight, people assumed that it was because I wanted to lose weight, but it wasn't. It was because I wanted to open my third eye and because I was feeling like, you know, somebody explained it to me that energy doesn't die, it just transfers. So when you are eating animals that have been, you know, in like living in, in jacked up conditions, like basically dwelling in their own poop and piss and like shoulder to shoulder with other animals they whole life just kind of trapped in cage like how do you think they feel they stressed out they depressed they probably have anxiety then they stand in the long line and they have to watch 21 of their friends get get like <laughs> slaughtered before it's they turn so i mean of course if it was like a line full of people and you just seeing them getting hacked like the whoever is at the front of the line getting killed then your anticipation to get to the front of that line is gonna be stressed the hell out so when when they kill that animal and then they package that meat that energy isn't anywhere but still in that meat and then we consume that meat and you know, I know that stopping eating meat definitely helped my personality and it definitely helped my mood because I was the type of person that had a very short fuse before. I used to just fly off the handle like, you know, anybody say or do anything wrong with me, it was like, boom, snap, like cussing out people, yelling, not giving a damn what I say. If anybody look at me wrong, what the F you looking at? Like just... Y'all, y'all just don't know. Like, and no, that wasn't, that was energy again that I picked up along the way, not being careful who I'm exchanging energy with, you know? So no, I wasn't always like that. But, you know, probably after my second relationship, I left that relationship like that because that's how she was. So, um, yeah, I used to fly off the handle. Now I have exquisite patience. I'm not even gonna hold you up. Like, I'm surprised at what people can say and the, the limit that people can p try to push me to that don't even affect me. I don't have to try hard. Like, you know, people can sit around and talk shit all they want. And I'm just like, okay, I'm sorry you don't like yourself. So you feel like you got to try to put people down so you can feel better. It's okay. I kind of feel sorry for you. Like, you know, I, I see things in a different perspective now. And I know that most people that walk around trying to make people feel tortured, it's because they tortured and they don't want to feel tortured alone. So I just look at it different now. Um, That's all I wrote down. But I'm trying to figure out if that's all, literally all I had to say. Um, Like, literally, that's about it. Like, the main, the main important thing is that life just becomes less relatable like you start to question society like things that used to be funny or humorous to you just looks extremely immature and idiotic to you like stuff i would have said back then and thought was funny or stuff i would have read you know when i'm scrolling down my timeline on facebook and laughed at like ah oh, he's stupid now i'd be really like for real he's stupid because it'd be sounding so stupid to me like and I'm not trying to put nobody else down, but it's like you just think from a more conscious level. And like today, I feel like I was kind of annoyed with men, which I love y'all. Y'all beautiful. Like we need y'all and all, but we also need y'all to grow the hell up because I just see so much immaturity like in our masculine figures and we need y'all to boss up. Y'all y'all want grown women. Y'all want mother figures in, in us. Well, we need y'all to be the father's. We need y'all to be the father figures. We don't need y'all to be acting like the sons out here. So today, you know, it's not an everyday thing. Because like I said, I love y'all. We need y'all. You know, yeah, yeah, we do grow the seed y'all and plant us 
and plants within us into a whole human. But unless y'all plant that seed, then it would nev never be a human being. So, yeah, although everybody feels like women rule the world or we run the world or without us, there could be no life. No, without both energies, there could be no life. We can't make a baby on our own. You know, we can't keep the world going on our own. But at the same time, stop thinking that we're supposed to do everything. Like, I'm just seeing men posting stupid stuff like, how many of y'all can survive and still do good without child support? How many of y'all can stop thinking that that shit is okay? Like, stop thinking that a woman is supposed to have a man, have a baby with a man and be the one, only one to take care of them. Stop acting like because she's struggling without the help of the man that helps her make that baby that she a bum ass bitch or something because she not. Shit, it take two to tangle. Why is one person on the fucking dance floor? So that was just the stuff that I was irritated with today that I was kind of speaking on because, you know, normally I would have like probably try to participate in the post like me. I can survive. I've been surviving out of child support, but I'm just thinking to myself, why did, why is that necessary? This shouldn't even be a question that you asking. The only way a man shouldn't be paying child support is if it's agreed upon between both parents that he just come and bring the money straight to her, which doesn't happen these days. Because for some odd reason, men think that it's easy to take care of these kids. It's not. It's not. And a little $200, that ain't nothing. Sometimes we doing that in one day. And, and people get tired of that. You know what I'm saying? And before, like I said, I wasn't seeing a perception of grow the hell up. Be men. Be fathers. Stop acting like a woman's son. Because we don't need an extra kid on top of the kids that we being left to raise alone. And that's real talk. It's time to grow the fuck up. You know what I mean? So, I mean, like I said, I just been posting stuff today. I know guys been like, God, but at the end of the day, it's like everybody needs to grow up. Women too. I'm, I'm noticing a lot of immaturity in women too, but I feel like I see a lot of feminine energies that's just rising up out the freaking dust like Phoenix for real. And we need y'all to catch up, to be honest with you. And it's a lot of men that's doing it, you know, it's few and far between, but I'm starting to see more than I've seen before. But at the end of the day, I'm going to wrap it up because I'm getting off subject. I just wanted to, you know, share that to say that my perception of certain things have changed. Certain things that used to be cute and humorous to me is like, this is a real issue. Why are we joking about this? You know what I'm saying? Like, kids are at stake here. The, wealth, the welfare of kids are at stake. Why y'all talking about y'all income and y'all finances should be taken out the equation and women should be able to do it alone. We've been doing it for years. It's time for y'all to step the fuck back up. All the way up. Be the leaders of the village. Stop falling back and letting us lead and rule and do everything that y'all supposed to be doing. And then expect to be treated like kings when y'all acting like goddamn pages. And knights. We don't want a damn page or a knight. We got them running around with our last name. We need y'all to be the freaking kings and the emperors of the village. So, at the end of the day, I'm going to end this video here. Those are some of the signs of a spiritual awakening that I experienced in this past year. Um, I'm still working on actually opening my third eye, which I'm about to take everything um, animal animal byproducts out of my diet and just go completely um, vegan and just take the steps necessary to be serious about opening up my third eye because it's important to me. Oh yeah, one last thing and then I'm going to end this because it's about to be 30 minutes. With the last thing that I've been experiencing, and that's only been this past week since last Friday, is that I've been getting major intuitive downloads. Um, I was giving a friend advice last week, Friday. He called me. He was distressed talking about his uh, relationship situation. And I, I started off giving him advice from my own mind. And then it was like 10 minutes straight of just divinely guided messages it, uh, stuff was coming out of my mouth that I had no previous knowledge for and that previous knowledge of and that's how I know it wasn't even me it was definitely channeled so um no I don't view myself as psychic or anything but I definitely been receiving downloads and people they can tell they can tell that that I'm getting it from uh, from source because he could tell he was like that that didn't even sound like you and I was like you know what <laughs> 
I felt the same way. It didn't sound like me, you know? And I, I feel like I took a step out of my body, sat on the bed, and was like listening to myself give advice because I was shocked and stunned at what was coming out of my mouth. I had absolutely no knowledge, no previous knowledge of what I was telling this man. And he said I hit the nail on the head, number one. And number two, he can tell that that was channeled because it, it, I wasn't even talking like myself, so... I'm going to wrap it up. It just hit 30 minutes, y'all. So um, I hope that answers some questions to people that are wondering, you know, if they are actually going through a spiritual awakening, you know, what's the signs and stuff. Those are the signs that I've been experiencing. Hopefully you can relate if you're going through a spiritual awakening. You know, if not, you can work on it if it's something you're interested in. Just, you know, becoming conscious because i feel like it was a blessing it definitely was a blessing in my life definitely raised my vibrations definitely changed my life for the better so i definitely encourage it anyways guys i'm pretty freaking drained uh i look like i ain't got no luster in me so i'm gonna talk to you guys later and y'all know what's up till next time